Over the last decade, Osprey has published a lot of war game rules under their Blue Book label. As of the summer of 2023, there are over 30 titles available. And Greg, our club has played a lot of them. Yeah, we certainly have. And I mean, the allure of these little blue books is that they're easy, they're cheap, and they offer a great beer and pretzels experience. But the truth is that the quality of these games is all over the place because there are different authors who seem to receive indifferent editorial oversight. When you buy an Osprey War game, you're rolling the dice in terms of quality. And today on Little Wars TV, we're gonna go through our favorite and least favorite titles in the line. There are some absolute gems in here. There are. Uh, but also a couple clunkers. Miles, let's begin with a caveat. We are only looking at the historical Blue Book titles today. Since we aren't reviewing the full list, I want to give a special shout out to Gaslands as my favorite non-historical title. It's like beer and pretzels car wars for those of us from a certain generation with really slick movement mechanics using templates. Okay, Miles, let's start our review today with the best of the best, the games that we really love playing in the club. Yeah. And why don't we do this as a top three in no particular order? And I'll start. The Men Who Would Be Kings. I know you said these were in no particular order, but if we were ranking Ospreys, I'm pretty sure this game would be at the top of my personal list. Published back in 2016 and written by Daniel Mercy, The Men Who Would Be Kings is a big skirmish game set during the Victorian colonial age. We did a full review on Little Wars TV a few years ago, and I encourage anyone uh, to watch that for a detailed analysis. But this game is mechanically sound, easy to learn, and damn fun to play. Yeah, Dan Mercy is Osprey's probably most prolific writer, and most of his games share very similar mechanics. They do, so that means that if you like The Men Who Would Be Kings, you're probably also going to want to check out his other titles. Lion Rampant is the book that's probably garnered the most attention over the years, but each of his games offers a little bit of a twist or addition to a shared core system. The heart of Daniel's system is a great activation mechanic that makes it easier or harder to act with a unit based on the type of unit and the order you want to give it. So the British in the Sudan are going to shoot quite willingly, while the Dervishers are easier to move and charge into combat. I do like Lion Rampant and some of Daniel's other titles, but Miles, I think for me, uh, The Men Who Would Be Kings really is the gold standard. I agree, but I would put Lion Rampant in my top three also. Okay, well, a game that I think we're both going to put in the top three is actually a much older Osprey title. Ronin, published in 2013, is just the second title in the Osprey War Game series. Uh, this is a game for skirmish action in Samurai Japan. And we love it too. We do. Um, for the most part, Ronin does get, I think, a little bit clumsy when you're trying to engage multiple figures in the same scrum. Mm -hmm. There are some gray areas you'll need to interpret with your friends, but overall, it's a brilliant game. Characters and leaders in this system get a pool of attack and defend dice you can allocate, so every duel and every new clash involves some strategy. I love those mechanics. And for the handful of questions that you may have when playing it, the author, Craig Woodfield, improves on nearly everything with his sequel game, On Guard. On Guard is a swashbuckling game that uses the same core mechanics as Ronin. Um, so if you like this game, I do think that you're going to like On Guard. In addition to the tactical dice decision making, you get new skills and abilities for your models, making this the perfect three musketeers adventure game. We've used the Ronin system for all kinds of stuff in the club, uh, including the Crusades, basically anything with sword fighting and a handful of figures. I've actually been thinking about a Robin Hood project using either Ronin or On Guard. You know, On Guard is actually a great replacement game for uh, On the Seven Seas, which is um, kind of a dreadfully boring uh, game. Yeah, not a great pirate game. So uh, that covers our top three miles, mm -hmm. which if people are counting at home was actually a top four. Math, never been a strong suit at this club. The Men Who Would Be Kings, Lion Rampant, Ronin, and Ungard. The first two are mechanically similar and the second two are also related. These are our favorites, but Miles, I suspect viewers at home might be interested to hear from a wider panel of judges. And we have you covered. We asked our Patreon community to rank their favorite Osprey historical games, and here's how the vote shook out. You'll notice some crossover from with how Greg and I rank things, but there's also a lot of love for Rebels and Patriots and Pikeman's Lament, both Daniel Mercy titles. The next tier for our patrons include titles like Dux Honors of War, and Fighting Sail. 
Oh my, one of those titles actually earned very low marks from uh, yours truly. So why don't we get into that part of the review, Miles, and talk about a few games from Osprey that we think could have used maybe a lit, uh, little bit more development. I mean, a game like Absolute Emperor, a game I was really excited to check out when it, when it was first released. A base is a division in this Napoleonic big battle system. There are some self-congratulatory design notes about how this game represents a new, innovative approach to Napoleonics, but it's a simplistic rehash of old ideas more suited for th to a base being a brigade rather than a division. Absolute Emperor is a game that I have no interest in playing again, and despite having a different author, I think it shares some of the same flaws as Fighting Sail. This was a 2015 fleet-level game, also designed for big engagements. But like Absolute Emperor, Fighting Sail takes beer and pretzels way too far, stripping out everything that makes Age of Sail tactics worth exploring. Want to sail into the wind? Sure! Want to see a, a heavy, first-rate ship of the line outmaneuver a light frigate? That does happen in Fighting Sail, because in this game, all ships are equally maneuverable. The sailor in me is enraged. There's virtually no command friction either, which is really odd if you're refighting a big naval battle where admirals famously struggle to coordinate their squadrons. That brings us to Poseidon's Warriors, a game that we really wanted to use in our recent Thermopylae episode. We, uh, we did try, Miles. Poseidon Warriors is a game that feels half-finished. It's almost like Osprey published the first draft. Maddeningly, it's a first draft with some promise. The bones of a very fast-playing Ancients naval game are here, but only the bones. The ships are too brittle, combat is way too abstracted, and like Fighting Sail, there's zero command and control limitations. Ancient naval battles were driven by command and control friction. I know. Poseidon's Warriors is a game that feels like it just doesn't have any weight. It's, it's half-baked. And if you let go of it, it floats away. I, I, I think there are a few other titles we can put on the honorable mention list of titles to, be avo to avoid. We already mentioned On the Seven Seas as one you could afford to skip. Men of Bronze, the game we heavily modified for Thermopylae, is a real mess as written. The support rules are totally broken, and once again, this is another case of a game that could have used real playtesting. 100% agreed, but a credit to Eric Farrington for correcting many of those issues in his follow-up, Wars of the Republic. That game feels like a do-over. It's basically the game that Men of Bronze should have been. Chosen Men and World of Flame are two titles that felt very outdated to me, and clunky old-school mechanics not in keeping with Osprey's Blue Book, Beer and Pretzels vibe. Miles, I'm glad that you mentioned Chosen Men, the Napoleonic skirmish game. Uh, I was very interested in that title when it was published because I was hoping for a kind of lighter version of Sharp Practice. Um, yeah, the game definitely did not deliver in that regard. And Chosen Men also highlights the weakness of Osprey's editorial publishing style. They do absolutely nothing to support their Blue Book games. Osprey relies 100% on authors to do their own marketing and support. And in the case of Chosen Men, Mark Latham outright said that he had no interest in supporting the game if Osprey wasn't paying him to do so. So now, we're being sold a game with no publisher support and an author who's walked away from the project. I don't like it either, but that's the business model. Osprey throws a lot of darts at the wall, and sees what sticks. Two of their Blue Book titles mm -hmm. did stick, Lion Rampant and Gaslands, earning big, uh, glossy, hardback reprints. And, I mean, this second edition, much yeah. nicer, higher production value yeah. than the first. Exactly. If a game's a surprise hit, they reinforce it, they invest in it. Uh, if it's not, they move on to the next one. If you're looking for our recommendation, here are the four club favorites we think that you will really like playing. And here are a few more titles in the lineup that our Patreon supporters think you should check out. If you'd like to hear my interview with Phil Smith, the head of Osprey Games, that's available right now on Apple Podcasts, SoundCloud, and anywhere you listen to podcasts for free. What are your favorite Osprey titles? Let us know in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this review and you like talking about war games, why not hit that subscribe button and join us? Once again, we want to thank DiRatia Productions. I ordered some of their 6 mil Ancients, 15 mil Medievals, and even a Napoleonic Sloop. These were printed by my mini factory because I do not have a resin printer myself. 
seeing them in person, I have to say, quite impressed. So go check them out yourself.